What's good, y'all? I'm Michael Levitin, and this is Halito from High Country News. Today we're talking all about the Colorado River. And even if you don't live in Colorado, this watershed is incredibly important for communities of the Western United States. Jonathan Thompson wrote about the 100-year anniversary of the Colorado River Compact. The compact governs water rights across seven southwestern states. The watershed is 250,000 square miles. Thompson tells us, however, there are two notable flaws in the pact. Number one, there are 30 tribal nations within the Colorado River watershed, and not a single one was included in negotiations, nor even consulted during the creation of the compact. That's in spite of the fact that tribes are sovereign entities with rights superior to state governments. Number two, the river historically carried over 30% less water than the amount on which the compact was based. Put differently, there was a huge shortage just baked directly into the compact, specifically 2 million acre feet short of what was baked into the compact. And of course, this shortage has only grown with increasing droughts in the area. Quite frankly, needs to be updated. Speaking of droughts in the Colorado River, the U.S. Supreme Court agreed to hear a case brought by the Navajo Nation that could have far-reaching impacts on tribal water rights. In a collaboration with Grist, Jesse Blazer, Joseph Lee, and Anna V. Smith write that tribes are still working to secure their water rights, while states face increasing water cuts amid a two-decade-long drought. Here's the issue. The more water that tribes use, the less states have. So states, of course, have less incentive to work with tribes, especially during drought. That's the result of a century of policies that excluded indigenous nations. Still, tribes often have senior rights, meaning they'd face cuts last in a shortage. Now they are pushing to upend the system that hemmed them in and fight for changes that could lead to more sustainable and equitable distribution of water in the years to come. Speaking of water, waves, you know what's not happening? A red wave! You know what other kind of wave is not happening? An unprecedented wave of countless migrants, as Arizona's Governor Doug Ducey claims. But you know, just in case, in 2022, Ducey decided to build a makeshift border wall out of shipping containers. Caroline Tracy highlights the ineffectiveness of the wall, but also the unintended consequences it has had for wildlife migration. And that the wall is in an area that has very little human traffic. And that containers are easier to climb than most walls. Never mind that several sections of it tipped over within the first week of construction. Anyway, not only is this monument to xenophobia an eyesore, it's also ineffective at the thing that it was built to do, poorly constructed, and has unintended consequences for wildlife. So, good job, us. Despite the shortcomings of the wall, it's a dope read, as are all the rest of the stories here today. To read more about the West, pop on over to hcn.org. We'll be back again here next week, of course. Until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and stay safe.